Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's going to be sort of a part two to my previous video where I installed a trailer hitch on this Lexus NX300H. And today we're going to go over installing the wiring harness for the four pole connector. And this should be pretty similar as well for the non-hybrid NX300 as well as for the NX200T with one exception being that we won't have to run a power wire from the front of the engine to the trunk since the battery is already in the trunk on the hybrid model which makes this a little bit easier although it is still a pretty involved process so we're going to go over removing all of the interior panels that need to come out putting in the connectors and then putting it back together so let's dive right in here's all the mechanical tools that you're going to need to physically get into the trunk to get to the wiring so that you can plug the harness in first off is a 10 millimeter socket and then a ratchet or a hand adapter to be able to drive that a pick and hook set or a flathead screwdriver to get all of the plastic clips popped open as well as some of those plastic clip remover tools up at the top. A Phillips screwdriver and then some nice to haves is something to put all the little pieces into as well as a flashlight. Here's everything that comes in the box of the wiring harness. I bought the Kurt harness but the Tekanosha one will be basically the same thing. You have the controller box, the positive power in for the controller, the negative ground for the controller, then the, the four pole connector that goes to your trailer, the two connectors for the right side and the left side that plug into the tail lights that already have the OEM factory connectors on them, an inline fuse to go to the battery, as well as a large spool of wire which you may have to use if you have the non-hybrid vehicles since you're going to have to run power all the way from the engine bay down to the trunk. Luckily, I'm not going to have to do that with the hybrid. A little dust cover for the four pole connector, as well as a ring terminal to connect to the battery, a fuse, some crimp connectors, screw, and some adhesive to hold the controller down in the trunk, and some zip ties to manage everything. Here's the paperwork that came with the trailer wiring. As you can see, the installation instructions are not very complete especially with not very many pictures, which is why I'm making this video to help show exactly how to remove all the little plastic connectors. And then here's the wiring diagram as well, which I just discussed. And then if you decide to solder your connectors, you'll need some soldering tools, or you can just use the included crimp connectors if you'd rather. So let's go and start taking the trunk apart. I have the trunk open and the seats folded down. So first off, we'll just pull out all of the things that aren't even bolted down or anything like this mat. Spare tire cover. The foam over the spare tire. The spare tire itself. Which, while you're in here, it's a good idea to check your pressure. Since these often go flat over time, no use. This foam under here. And then also the little first aid bag that comes with it. Just pulls off of Velcro. So now we're going to get into where you actually have to disconnect some, some little the clip connectors. Oh, and these as well come out on the sides. These are the type of clip connectors where you press in on the center to disengage them and then you can just pull them out. There's four connectors on this panel on the left side and then there's going to be two on the right side. And then this just lifts right out. Let's take a look on the other side. Take those out and then lift this out here. Next up are the two large pieces here in the back. So each of these comes out separately. They have one Phillips screw in each corner. Then along the back, there's a row of those plastic clip connectors. Those will be easy to take out. And then each side also has a hidden connector down here which I'll try and film this. I recommend you take and you slide out like this 
rather than forcing it up since then you can come back with your tool to take those out this side it's going to be even harder to see since you basically can't see it at all but it's in there and so then when you slide this up you can see there's that little connector there and then what that allows you to do is then take your plastic tool plastic trim piece remover tool go up under there and pop that out really easy. And this is why I have a Band-Aid wrapped on my tool as well as so that it doesn't scratch paint pieces. So you can see if you slide it and then lift it, you get perfect access to be able to then pop it right out. And then when you reinstall it, you can just slide this oop, back onto there like that, and then just click it right back in real easy like that. Next up, I'm going to move, remove this back row of plastic clips back here, as well as I already loosened these two Phillips screws on each side. And then we'll be able to remove these two pieces here and here. I noticed that using the bent neck one of these works a little bit better for getting these out specifically. So you can see they just pull out real simple like that. And then it might be a little bit hard to show, but these two pieces do separate. You don't have to take this top part off. This will want to come off, but you don't have to take that off. But if you just pull here, these two pieces come out. And then you can see this one lifts out. And then this one here lifts out as well, which I'll take out from the front there. All right, so here's me removing this part from the front of the trunk. And then next up, we're going to work on this front bumper thing that's right at the mouth of the trunk right here. And there's four little clips underneath, which we can access by gently pulling the weather stripping back. It shouldn't be glued on or anything. You should be able to just slide it out like this. And then this might be somewhat hard to capture on video, but the four clips that you need to get to are going to have white little tabs underneath so you can see there's one there those two things there are just supports then there's a clip here's the center there's a clip and then there's the last one under there so let me get us set up to take those out so now i'm going to undo those four tabs one there one there one there Then you can see that this just pulls right out. It's not connected with anything else, just those four little tabs underneath there. Next up is this interior panel here, which there's one bolt up here, then there's two here on these hooks. And there's another bolt hidden under here, which I'll show a close up of, as well as this little thing right here, which twists out. And then I'm using an uh, electric ratchet as well, just to speed things up. And then once we have this out, this top one bolt here, this whole thing just pulls out. Just nothing but clips back there. Then these two bolts here. So now let's take a close-up look at those two. Here's a close-up of this little plastic hook here. So you press in this tab on the side and then rotate it, and then you can take it out. You can see it just goes back in, clicks and rotates in. And then for this hook here, you pull this down, and then this just pulls off, and then you can get to the bolt under there. So now this piece just pulls out here with two clips under here and some clips up here. You don't want to rip this all the way off though because there's wiring that goes to the light and the 12 volt outlet and you don't need to take it all the way off anyways. So just undo there and there. Then you can see the clips. Here's a closer look inside the panel. You can see the connector that we're trying to get to is that white one right there. That's for the tail lights. 
And then with this pulled back, there's plenty of room to run the wiring down over to the battery along the floor. And here's the other side. It's pretty much the same thing. There's the connector we were after right there. And then there's also some little rubber plugs on the floor, which we can use to run the wiring out of the vehicle. If you plan on using a, an outside of vehicle hit holder for the wiring, like what I have here. So then you can use that right there, or you can just keep it in the trunk and run it out of the mouth of the trunk every time. And here's a close up of, in here of how to disconnect the connector. You just press in with the tab on your thumb and that pulls out like that. Okay, I have the wiring harness installed now and I'll show you where I hooked everything up to. For the positive power to the controller, I just used one of these, this bolt right up here. I had to use a different ring connector, which I crimped on than the one that came with it, since the one that came with it was too large. Then that just runs down along here. Don't forget to put in that 10 amp fuse into the inline fuse holder. You can see under here is the controller. Don't try and put it right here on this nice flat area because I test fitted the plastic pieces and one of them has a leg that sits right there. So tuck it up into there or up into here, something like that. Then you can see back behind here, real easy to connect up the tail lights and the turn signal connectors just plug in with those same OEM connectors. I use this bolt right here for the, for the negative for the ground to the controller. So that's real convenient. I didn't have to drill or use their screw or anything. Just use that OEM ground right there. Then you can see coming out of the controller, the green wire uh, goes over here to the other side. And that's the only, only one wire that goes over there to this right side turn signal and tail light. And that just plugs in like that. And then you can see the wiring for the four pole connector down here, which I'm not gonna have time tonight to run it through the floor like I'm planning to eventually. So I'll just leave it here in the trunk. And that's about it for the wiring install. Luckily, uh, I, this is the hybrid model, which means I don't have to run a wire way all the way up to the engine bay to connect to the battery since the battery's right here. I'm not gonna really show how to do that. If you do have the non-hybrid vehicles though, you might wanna look into how you can pull apart the carpet or maybe just have a mechanic run it underneath or something like that. But anyways, I'm gonna get a tester and make sure that these actually are corresponding to the right signals and then we'll be putting everything back together. Okay, so now let's test out the, the wiring hooked up correctly. Here's the left turn signal, the right turn signal, the brake light, which is both turn signals combined, and then the tail light, which is just the nighttime running light, which is uh, not the same as the brake light. Well, I'm about to reassemble everything, and I'm planning on just doing a time lapse for reassembly since it's going to be basically the same procedure in reverse. There's only one thing that I really want to point out before we start, is these two pieces here that go where the seatbelts are. Make sure that when you put them in, you line up all the little tabs, especially these lower two. Don't just slam it in. Make sure that all of the tabs are going into their holes since you'll end up bending the little tabs. But anyways, let's get to it. on how to install the trailer wiring harness for your Lexus NX300H. Hopefully you found it helpful, a step-by-step -step guide for how to take everything apart and put it back together. So if you like this video, give me a big like and subscribe. Go check out my channel. I have lots of other interesting content. The video right before this one was how to actually put the hitch on itself. I have 3D printing content, engineering content. Plan on doing lots of other auto repair videos out here in the garage. So go check it out and I'll see you next time.